Alright, so uh, can I have a show of hands who are in the F&B industries? Wow, okay. Okay, cool. So, honestly, I am so not in the food and, food and beverage industry, but I have a thinking of what are the basic ne necessities for human beings? Because these are very subjective questions that all of us human we need air, we need food, we need uh, to sleep, we need shelter, and we need water. So one of the things that I have been, one of the issues come to my mind all the time is about food. I always think of how we ensure that food are not being wasted and it's continuously being utilized if efficiently and being uh, eat comfortably so that humans are continually, continuously, they can improve their life being and also they can continue their, what they want to do. And also food is actually very important to us. Every year we see food wastage around 790,000 tons of food being wasted at, at 2014 and up to now is even more higher. And in 2050, we can see that food are getting depleted, resources are depleted, human getting more and more. What are we gonna be? Are we gonna be a zombie eating everyone, killing everyone just to eat, to survive? Is that the thing that we really want? So I'm trying here to think of what are the pain points that we try to mitigate now so that in future, we have no this kind of issues about food. So for currently, I think of about food in terms of in, in Singapore, is human, are, are we fond of cheaper price food or are we, do we have any mind that thinking food, if being wasted, what will we feel? How are we going to have, enjoy a good food where if the food price is very expensive, are you gonna eat the food? And if it's very authentic, but the price is very, very high, you go for like, let's say chimes, you feel the food is so authentic, it's so marvelous. But in that perspective, do you think that it can cause uh, dissatisfaction? Or will you think that any of the uh, ways to overcome these situations or these environment issues, so that actually human can actually eat the food in a very, uh, satisfactory, yeah. So, so I'm trying to think of any way that, for current, especially Singapore, cost of living getting higher and higher, and we can say that's one of the most cost costly country in the world, based on cost of living. So I'm trying to think that how we want to mitigate this food issue problem, wastage especially, that can bring lower prices and, especially in the low income people, they can enjoy authentic food that the food is not being wasted as well. So, trying to see any of your opinions or ideas, that especially at 11 o'clock, sometimes people are working very late, they're trying to get some food to eat, and some labor workers, they work quite late, they want to think of some nice food to eat and healthy food to eat, but they, they, they feel that all shops are closing soon. So, we have any ideas, let's say, if the food are being served at the time and they can manage to eat and they can purchase the food at a cheaper price, even they can think of, I can even help them to save the food wastage. Will it really benefits in terms of being a value add to the customers as well as the restaurant owners as well? So try and see what's your point of view to have, to eat, to try to have more authentic food with cheaper price and at the same time, it, can accommodate for everyone in Singapore especially who always think that food is getting more and more pricier so yeah just see any of you that have any thoughts of it where like let's say currently we have a lot of food delivery around like food panda uh, delivery food uber eats can I just struggle you for a shot? I'm sorry, really sorry. No problem. Uh, can we just move a little bit further? We are trying to open the thing. Oh, thank you. Sorry. No problem. Sure. Thanks. So, so uh, your question, I don't quite understand. Okay. It's so, it's... Um, food price. Yep. And food waste. Yep. 
what linkage are you assuming between So actually I'm thinking of how we want to bring this food wastage into us a very uh, a create awareness for social uh, for this food wastage into we, we can recycle it as as so well. The question was what linkage are you assuming between food wastage and food price? Okay, food wastage. We don't want food to be wasted, right? What linkage are you assuming between food waste and food price? Do you think these two things are related? If based on my my mm -hmm. opinion, for long run, food price are getting more and more pricier, right? And more food will be wasted as well, right? So in terms of economical uh, weight, uh, in terms of economical stand of stand of view, we feel that even the food are being wasted. Why not we just reduce the amount of food that being wasted into a more economical kind of? How much would it cost to reduce the waste of food? Um, well, this I have not, I have not really surveyed yet, but in my point of view, I feel that. The more we waste the food, the more the, the more food we waste, the more amount of money will be wasted as well. Because we are producing food is all cause of energy and money. I would right. hazard a guess that that's mm. assumption is untested and all right. false. Okay. I suspect, um, I suspect that it's, I'm guessing. I don't know. Mm, mm, mm. Fact, sure, sure. I would guess that the changes in product bundling and the method of sale, the method of serving. So hookers serve like four things, six things, five things. Okay. And I said, that, well, you have to serve eight different combinations to exactly match what you're doing. Why? Yeah. That pushes their costs up. Yep. Not down. So that's why... That, that, that's the difference. Like your, your, your concern that you're making is sort of you're, uh, mm. drawing a straight line between that there's food being wasted. Yep. And if only we could stop wasting it, that would make food cheaper. Yeah. I suspect that that's an understatement and managed to be wrong. Well, if, if you assume that it's wrong, why don't you just create a connection the correct way by adding a tax for food waste? That's the thing, yep. Nobody likes that word tax. <laughs> yeah, but, but if you want to create a linkage between the two and drive it down, why don't you just create a tax based on waste? The I know that's a dirty word. No, no, no. Just raise food and still raise prices. They pay the tax. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, well, in a sense, yeah, but you can, it, oh wait, so th this is a little bit different. Here, you don't actually see in most of your bills, like GST and everything broken out into right. like an itemized list. But like in the US, if you have a sales tax, it's put clearly on the price that you pay. So if they raise a the price that's not based on taxes, you can clearly see that in the bill that you get. And then you can judge and take your business elsewhere. I think the, the border answer is that there's a reason that like, so, well, like Bandy and Chris about that is a dirty word. Is it is harmful? Mm. Actually, it does harm the economy. I mean, so you, you have this sort of, it would be nice to have the sight of wasted food disappear. That's not by itself a welfare goal for the for the nation. Therefore, you know, do we, does that justify? Well, well, taxes might have some detrimental effect. It's not always the case. I mean, you're starting to waste societal, what's good for society versus what's good for, for instance, Growth or something like that, and I don't think there's a necessarily relation. I mean, I'm not saying that adding context to the question is Singapore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm there's, not, a there's a definite yeah. uh, connection in this country. I, I think there's, there's a connection in, in more. There, there's a healthcare. connection in this country, but whether that's correct assumption or not is not necessarily the case. It's, if you it's add, pretty solid. There's, I mean, no, there's no reasonable that, that if you add any dispute. form of tax to something, then it's going to be detrimental to the country as a whole. Yes. That's Oh, in Singapore context, but what about other country context? Yeah, but so that's why I asked the context. Oh. If the context is Singapore, then that picture is fairly clear. Yeah. Singapore runs on a level of efficiency that most of our economies don't. And consequently, even small taxes But, but is that necessarily tax. good for society as a whole, though? That's the question. Is as a, and then you're, okay, so this is going to explode into the role of government yep. and things like yes, this. But, <laughs> but, but, but yes, this like, so, so this is yeah, a I'll, I'll, I'll drop, But well, I'm, just saying, like, I'm just saying that that's, that's one way that you can link these two things together is by imposing tax. Okay. It's not going to apply here. Really. Okay, but if you want to impose a link, you can do it, hmm. whether it's feasible here. Sub so, subject to other constraints on yeah. the economic impact, political impact, social acceptability, which are different in different places. I'm yeah. not saying they're all bad. Yeah. They're different in Australia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More taxes so we can have more yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. I mean, you I mean, just say it's not 
you can impose these links if you want to. It just depends okay. on how much political capital and mm. economic capital you're willing to expend. Okay, cool. Or if the benefits are effective, yeah. not even, it may even be net positive. Yeah, yeah. the political benefits could that, be That takes a lot of study and research, which usually doesn't happen when you say so. But I think these tax rebates are mostly helping the restaurant owners to actually to get some rebates when they try to solve this kind of food wastage issues, right? Is okay. it? So, uh, so we are actually thinking that this is a value added in terms of from the government side to the business owner of the restaurant owner especially. Can, can government get involved in Singapore? So just, just to clarify with you mm. that, Sometimes uh, there's a few reasons why the food court or restaurant throw away the food. Mm. One is hygiene. After four yep. hours, you last night that you treat a contains yep. meals mm. or laksa that will be meal or creams or whatever you have to be thrown away yep. or food poison issues. Mm -hmm. That's one. Mm -hmm. And second issues is uh, is uh, to ensure the integrity of the staff are being yep. helpful. The reason why is because it can to show the integrity of the staff. Stuff. What 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 I mean by that is that imagine I if I'm the staff right or the manager, right? I can ask the chef to cook more food, then after that, instead of throwing away now, I can bring home. Yep. You understand what I can say? Mm. It sounds it sound really uh, crazy, but this is really what happens some of the employers yep. of the restaurants, they actually have to make kind of thoughts. Let's right. do. And third part of this is, there's no incentive. So for instance, if you go to Starbucks, you can get free coffee ground, use coffee ground, Starbucks one, yep. uh, to grow mushrooms, okay? Or to for fertilizers. But if you go to coffee beans, They'll tell you that I'm sorry, uh, we don't provide uh, used coffee. Uh, one of, uh, because of the website, the CSR, the kind mm, of things. Yeah. Mm, mm. But the first two reasons are the one that hold it. Yeah, the yeah. hygiene and, and the quality. The fourth reason mm. is uh, the, uh, the handsome guys over there say the reasons that uh, Singapore is extremely efficient. It's not efficient if you want to recycle the food. Uh, it's, it costs more carbon footprint, in fact, it perhaps is more electricity, more manpower, logistic, everything yep. to, uh, to actually recycle the food. Mm. Then, to just show you, yeah, just to share with you. Okay. One good example is looking at your used clothes. The number of clothes that you recycle, you hope to recycle, is actually, uh, and not in the land view lah. This is one good example. Yep. Even actually, if you think of recycle of, not even clothes, but actually, leather Sorry, equipment. I think what you meant by recycle is actually to redistribute. Right? Redistribute, oh, yeah. Mm, mm. Or, but not, not to recycle. Yeah, it's like you reuse. Reuse, yeah. reuse yeah. Or sometimes we, we reverse. Yeah. Or maybe we can just get some raw, like we can incorporate all these different materials around and then we can build another items, like from leather bags to another leather bags. Who knows? Well, I, think, I think you point to one that's, that's worth it for, and I don't know what's happening here. So, um, Pierre Manger is a sandwich. Mm -hmm. And they had that problem. They make their sandwiches, or their differentials, they made their sandwiches fresh every day on premises. Mm -hmm. Most places you buy a sandwich in the UK, they made in a factory somewhere, they're packed in nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So the last four or five days, yeah. cheese and those sandwiches. Mm -hmm. they go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, they're okay. Um, and so, <laughs> Pre-Monger's whole premise is they do them fresh uh, in the premises you buy them in on the day you buy them. And what that means is at the end of the day, they've got to get rid of uh, an amount of overshoot. They don't they make many of the same disorder, but they also make a bunch in advance because PR are in queues, right? And so they were citing food safety regulations mm -hmm. were preventing charities from distributing to um, sort of homeless people, basically. And this became a point of public intention. Mm -hmm. And at some point, yep. uh, the, the, someone somewhere went, uh, okay, whether there was a shift in regulatory position or just a shift in position inside the, the chain, I don't know. But there was actually uh, a successful transition there to cooperating with a charity to distribute yeah. their excess inventory the day. I wonder whether that's a viable uh, approach here. Or it would take the activity problem. But yeah, because Singapore ABA that restricts, so it's, it's hard to say. Consider that as a Singaporean, the way I judge my government authorities, uh, I have very little hope that they will change it. <laughs> uh, although, although you have that kind of food bank for aspire food can, mm -hmm. the food can yes, but for restaurant food, for fresh food. Uh, yeah, the fresh food, the, the cooked food that you are looking about, you are not. It's very difficult. And again, Asian versus sandwiches. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, different energy. It's not, it's not the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's much of a, more of an education because when mm -hmm. I see wastage food, it's mostly 
um, ap- doesn't look appealing. Like for example, the apple that is bruised, it's not soaked in Singapore. It's straight away thrown away. Yeah. Even if it's just mildly bruised. Mm. So what we can do to is to ed- actually educate the maybe have the supermarkets to partner up with, have a shelf of cheap food but it's slightly damaged. That's also going to put in the front. Yeah. Yeah. So, so ugly vegetables now. I actually some supermarkets actually have implemented yeah. this in Singapore. Correct. But I don't, I don't see widespread. That's the problem. Yeah. I, 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 Certain, yeah, so me living as a student, I'll go hunt for cheap foods. You know? yeah. If it's slightly damaged, I will take it. No worries. But then I don't see widespread in Singapore enough to actually have this type of cheap food for people to hunt and go with. Maybe near the expiry date, it gets cheaper and stuff. Yeah. Do you know the, so you wrote a few, um, do you have a sense of the breakup of the food waste issue? I mean, we hear numbers, sort of hundreds of tons a year, but number, you know what it is? Mm. Where, where is the wastage uh, mostly in? Which sector or what kind of food? I think basically in these uh, bakeries, because normally cakes, they can't store for long, and sometimes breaks if you see. Yeah. There's no way there's 800,000 tons of cakes being thrown out. Um, <laughs> but bakeries, in terms of breaks, I think there, there is a lot. But I'm, don't a lot of bakeries have like nighttime sales? Well, oh. this one... Uh, yeah, I'm if, if they do actually get to sell the bread, they'll sell the bread. But most of the time, because I, I work in a bakery actually, mm. in a chain bakery. Mm. So what I see every day is, in the morning, they'll take back the unsold goods, back to the factory and just throw it off because yeah. it's not it's not hygiene it's not yeah. safe to eat as well correct because for most buns they have a shelf day of three days yeah oh so they brought this to the factory and then they just yeah. dispose from the factory yeah, dispose okay the, don't dispose in the store because it doesn't look good okay yeah so yeah that's so one of the reasons i think it's the best I mean, one of the things to mitigate this is actually on the logistic side, on how we can provide a reliability and efficiency to deliver the food so that it's on the interval of time where we see, like, normally we see buffets, they serve buffets. They have interval time from what time to what time. Like, let's say I have a lunch, I will have a time there from one to four or three, or three to four o'clock. Mm-hmm. So these four hours I have to concentrate. If not, I can, you cannot distribute to anyone to eat. So this during interval of time is very crucial for the users or the eaters to expect that the food is being served uh, in a safe way and also they, are, they, they have no any hygiene issues and they won't take this interval of time to sue the restaurant owners if let's say it's, they have any food poisoning. So that's... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. That's in that uh, uh, sort of hackathon held at a hmm? university campus. Okay, which one? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so the solution was, hmm. uh, yes, there were sort of boards of Rather than students in orbit. And so the deal was uh, for the first two and a half hours of the catering interval, the food was for participants in the hackathon. Yeah. But the, the bunch were 30 minutes from discard, yeah. <laughs> make it disappear. <laughs> and yeah, so that, that, that worked in that case because we were actually yeah. in the premises of. Hungry uh, students. Hungry students. <laughs> yeah. I, I even tried it at last, uh, the last startup weekend where we have a lot of food being distributed by the organizers and we try to sort out how we want to distribute this food to the public users or any of the people that's around that area. So there's a lot of students during that time that have a conference. So we did some, some activities around there. So we bring all the packets of food to this uh, location and they say, do you want to have a free food? Of course, my, their eyes are so happy that they think, they think that what food is that? What can I eat? So I say, you help me to do some survey, just a survey, a minor survey. Then, okay, sure. We need that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about, the, I mean, is, is there a, and this is the, it's not sandwiches, it's rice and it's noodles and it's mm-hmm. um, vegetables and, and meat in sauces, mm-hmm. which are clearly, don't have the shelf life of sandwich. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the options for, make that available to else other than starving students who happen to be you know, within, mm. within Kui. <laughs> are, there, are there other options for making that food available to people in control? Mm, this is also thinking of one of, yeah, you, you are bringing a very good point of view. I sort of speak from ignorance as a, like someone didn't grow up here, but I sort of see catered food a lot, but generally not in university campuses. So, 
I think it, it also applies on the laborers as well, especially you see uh, construction workers. I've been doing fewer events on construction. So. Oh. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been to it. So I mean, right, where, yeah. where the paving is occurring. It, it can be as well. Where the construction sites are, mm. it's not the same places. It's not the same places, but it's also, they, they are, they are, their mindset is also, once they finish, any, they have done their work and they are really exhausted of a lot of things, especially water and food. It can cause, psychologically, it will cause them to have more food options in, my, in their mind. So, but I, I see a lot of labor workers, they would like to, have their home cooked food, especially they always bring their own food because they want to save money. They just want to save money. They always bring their food, just like a packet of rice with some gravy on it. And I feel it's quite quite pitiful to see them eating. Oh, okay, quite pitiful to see them watching them eating those food that is sometimes unhealthy, or maybe we can say that they they, they keep the food from since morning until the afternoon. And well, that is more than six hours sometimes when their wife is prepare the food for them at six o'clock and they keep it until lunchtime and it's already more, more than six hours so well something of how we can think of a better authentic food for them to eat as well it is it is it's, it's quite hard to justify now but I'm sorry uh, are there your priorities because as, mm, just, to, just to share with you yeah. that uh, these foreign workers that you're talking about construction workers right mm. They work for five to seven years. When they go back, they have financial freedom. <laughs> you ask anyone out there, they will say that I buy a few pieces of land, I bought a property already, I rent out. I, when they go back, they really shit late. Like. So I, I'm not sure that if they have a priority. <laughs> not not where they go sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> in, fact, in fact, we are more poorer than them. Like, so, so I'm not sure whether if that assumption is right. You will ask. So that's the, the other question, and I have not much contact with so, uh, <clears> this. <throat> Poor people in Singapore. What's mm. how is how feasible is it? Are the organizations distributing food to needy people in Singapore? And where are they getting their food? From? Okay, for needy, let's say you have at least a three thousand students who are unable to access uh, daily meals. So what happens is that three thousand kids, that means kids who are really need help, not the not the one that mm. uh, I think that I I'm, I'm not poor. You know, the kind of thing. No, my food, my my son is empty. The kind of kind of thing, real thing. <laughs> Uh, they usually get food vouchers and everything. Okay. They get food ones, they get mm. canteen. Uh, you don't mean uh, tertiary or casual? Uh, primary schools. Okay. Seven years old all the way up to 40, 16 to 17 years old. Okay. Mm. However, that uh, during school holidays, they don't get it. Yeah. Although as much as you have all kinds of subsidies, beautiful subsidies, but trust me, Singapore subsidies is not going to be enough if you have three or four kids. Uh, your wife is taking care of kids and you're only one person earning like thousand six or thousand and most of most of the time uh, uh, not just uh, I would say that logistics mm. as one mm. another thing is uh, it's very specific we are almost like Japan like that that poor people don't speak out the people that are in this room are not poor I'm sorry to say that mm. uh, the poor people most likely they have not enough time to even attend or even play the internet and the most internet thing is mobile phone Use, uh, YouTube, that's all for their own leisure to reduce stress. If not, they won't even fight for their so-called rights like we fight for their, their rights. So uh, there's still a lot of assumptions or true that we do know them and we are making a lot of assumptions like uh, that is uh, sad to say that may not be accurate to reflect them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes, uh, yeah, that's just one way. And the thing is, uh, logistically, it's very expensive. Yeah, yep. yeah it's not more. Just to, from one point to one point, just like, just call a mobile van. Hmm. For one trip, like, like your Uber for Warrior or Vans, just for this container like that, it's around $40. So imagine every single trip like that, one month is around a few thousand. The school principal would never give you this kind of money. One question. You say that the kids obtain uh, food coupons. Food coupon. where, they, where do they use them? Uh, so in every single primary school, then it's grade 1 all the way up to grade uh, 12. Okay. 12 uh, they have a school canteen, food court, like a kind of thing. Right. So where the school can actually, the students can use this to buy, uh, to buy food. So mm -hmm. what happens is that those people who are needy, mm -hmm. officially black and white, uh, declare yep. approved by them. There mm -hmm. are some cases uh, that they are not being approved, uh, but you are still very poor, but you don't get it. Uh. I'm sorry. Uh, right. don't <laughs> so I mean, that's, 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 very, that's very sad. But, uh, so they take the coupon and go to the uh, canteen, the store owner, say that I want the food, can I have this food? To right. replace okay. like something like cash mm -hmm. voucher like that. Mm -hmm. And these coupons, I believe, are given by the government. Uh, by the schools. 
the school, by the schools, the, the school the in the end yes. will come from the. Uh, no. Or, or uh, the private school I, or public it's, it's the school issue the coupon themselves. Okay. Whether where's, where's the money coming from? The money. Uh, the money? In terms of accounting, is probably is inside the school finance itself. But uh, someone's paying the vendors. Someone is paying uh, Yeah. Right. So. Uh, what you are saying about the, the logistic that is expensive is true. Why? Because it's inefficient. For example, if I believe there are a lot of training centers around Singapore, every training center has their own uh, catering. From this catering, there will be excess of food. So, using if using data, you can reduce, like optimize the delivery of this food. Like, just make an assumption from the points where it's wasted to the schools that need it. For example, I have a pool of a thousand students that are distributing in 10 schools, just to make it simple. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I know where these kids are. I know where the nearest source of excess food is. So myself, as a owner of a training center, I can say, hey, I have X amount of servings as leftovers. And then some company, for example, in this case, would be if the government is the one paying for these coupons, for example, just to put it simple, the government may look into the possibility of creating a logistic link between these centers and the school. Mm. You are saying something like a uh, Airbnb Uber kind of thing? Something like where? In a way. In a way. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, yeah. That data waste, yes. Data waste will be similar. Uh, then who will cover the logistics? Who will do this? Of course, if you use something, a ninja van will yeah, never be. For that, open, uh, right? Uh, for that, uh, I have quite high hope for the government to do that because it haven't saved the money. Yeah, if <laughs> yeah, I see it haven't saved the vote and, uh, for the folks. But there's some uh, red tapes across it. It's okay. the food poisoning part. Okay, sure. The, it's the last part that you want to get student food poisoning. Right, yeah. I don't okay. think any principal mm -hmm. or any teachers want to get fired because of this. So yeah, that, that, that is a concern, yeah. but I like your idea. Yeah. No, of course, mm -hmm. it would need to be properly determined. For example, what you mentioned before about regulation. It's true that if I put rigid regulation that this food after four hours is not valid anymore, then if I follow the regulation, I can never redu reduce this food. Impossible. Yes. I can't even give it away. Because so for instance, some food like let's say rice or fried chicken, you can leave it for up to six to eight hours. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. But if let's say it's a, it's a curry that with milk, then mm. you can have to throw it away. Yeah. Right, exactly. So there would be options that I can also make. But uh, yeah, for, uh, in terms of the points, uh, there's also one organization that's non-profit organi organization called the Willing Hearts. They actually provide this free food to the needy people. Yeah. So all of the company institutions or corporates, right? They will have, they will send people there to help assist mm -hmm. to do the cooking yeah. and preparing the food. So at the same time, they will also manage the delivery right. to the needy people. So I've been one. I've been there for once previously. And we at the morning at five o'clock we prepare all the food like mm -hmm. for thousands of people. Yeah. Okay, then after that we will segregate this in terms of locations. Where are the location we want to deliver this food to? So this is actually a non-profit organization where they deliver this food for the needy people. So it is actually they are they are having it now. Yeah, in Chai Chi Road. Yeah, yeah, Billing Hearts. That's the one. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So that's that's one day how to help the needy people in terms of providing free food. Mm, you can learn how to cook as well. Yeah. Mm. It's very really cool. You can learn how to cook as well. Yeah. I don't think they let you cook. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, on that note, I'd like to share something. So, like you mentioned, they're non profits. Um, there's also Food from the Heart, which does the bakery one. Oh, okay. So they um they rely on volunteers. So every night, mm. apparently, the volunteers would like just go to the bakeries that partner with them and pick up bread to distribute to like different homes and yeah. other centers and stuff. Yep. Yep. Yeah, um, but that's like completely volunteer based. Okay. They pick up the bread, they go with their own cars and drop them. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, just to add on to that, I think, um, sorry, sorry, bread, uh, like, the like, capital is time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.